Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to part three of our series in how to enjoy the fountain pen hobby without spending money. It's kind of a quest that I'm on personally and I just wanted to kind of share the ideas as I get them and as I work with them. So we're going to go into December because as I'm filming this, it's November 30th and I've, um, I'm going to be trying out all month in December another idea, which I've actually done before, which is to participate in a challenge, a kind of a creative challenge. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, but first I wanted to recap what we've already talked about. We started out by talking about really engaging with the things that we already have by rearranging them and or maybe you could call it organizing them and we talked about what I did with my ink shelf there um, how we put together an ink shelf and it's helped me so much to really see how much ink I have and, and have it right at my fingertips and then our next part that we covered was how I go about doing an ink study and how I really just with samples how much I can learn about the different inks. And I really, really enjoy that. It's something I've done since that first year that I started in fountain pens. And then, then the second year that I was back in the hobby, I ended up doing YouTubing. I was so excited about everything that I was discovering and wanting to share the hobby with, with uh, everybody that was interested, basically. But so let's just dive in for a minute here um, and talk about the subject, the elephant in the room, really, um, and I want to maybe clear up some misconceptions and, or at least just lay it all out there. So for me, this, um, I'm on kind of a dual track. I'm wanting to do better with how I manage my spending. And I'm also really kind of delving into minimalism. And it's, uh, it's anybody who really knows me would think I was making some kind of joke or they think, no, that's not Chris. You know, she collects books. She has all these fountain pens. She has all these inks, you know, but really, truly, I, uh, I guess uh, really in the beginning of last year, it started, the sparks started sparking where I felt like I have too much. I have too much of this. I have too much of that. And I love these things, but when you get to a certain point and it feels like too much, it's overwhelming, or for me anyway. Let, I'll just talk about myself. When I got to a certain point, even with books, it was overwhelming. I wasn't reading the books that I had really, not completely. Um, you know, so it's easier to talk about books and fountain pens because <laughs> I get a little touchy when it comes to my fountain pens and my inks, but... but I didn't think it was going to happen in this hobby, but then all of a sudden it did where I felt like, oh my goodness, if I see one more, you know, <laughs> uh, one more ink sample, I'm going to die. That was this past summer where I did my ink down, where I realized I wasn't, you know, emptying the vials, so to speak. I wasn't finishing them, finishing them, and I've gotten a lot better since I did that. But as I go along, it's just, uh, it's, the idea is growing. Not that I want to, um, I know that minimalism is a very touchy word, and it brings, it evokes, sometimes it evokes pictures of a stark room with a glass, uh, just, just nothing but a glass coffee table and nothing on it, or something like that. I think we all have kind of preconceived notions about what that might be. But for me, it just means having enough, not having excess in every area, finishing up things. Like, you know, it just means to me, uh, less hoarding, less saving and using the things that I have. So um, it's not, and I, I made great strides in terms of, uh, I set a pen allowance and we've talked about that a lot. But then there was an even, there was a point where I realized, oh, I'm just spending my pen allowance because I can and it's there, but I could probably use that better. Like there's a couple things within the fountain pen hobby that I want that I need to save for and not just have that idea of, okay, here's my $40. So I'm just going to spend it on whatever, you know, um, I'm actually saving up for a couple of more high, higher end, uh, things I've wanted from the beginning. And we'll see if I still want them when it comes time, because sometimes those ideas die down. But anyway, I just thought I'd mention that because it's, um, 
it's it doesn't take a situation for me where I feel like oh I don't have enough money to buy a new pen for me to realize I've already got so many pens and inks and I want to be using the things and you know I did a series um, the Sunday fun series which by the way I need to mention I've got some of those videos private right now until the uh, COPPA the children's online protection act is kind of ironed out because I had some videos I think uh, might be attractive to children and until they either change the terminology or I understand it better um, I don't want my channel to be mixed content this is a channel for adults and you know a fountain pen channel and and it wouldn't be stuff kids could do unsupervised but some of those videos it, I did about stickers and um, uh, ephemera and different things might appeal to children so they're temporarily on private but I didn't delete them and I do plan on trying to you know fix things so they can be the content can be there again but um, anyway now I kind of got off track <laughs> but uh, that's kind of what it turns into with me is, is a little bit of a ramble and I don't mean to um, I do want to get right into the meat of the video now though I want to talk about challenges and what they've meant to me um, you know, I've done challenges with uh, 30 Inks 30 Days, which was sponsored by Ink Journal. Had a great time with that. And then one October, I think it was, they did one with little prompts to, uh, you had to include uh, their words. I think there were two or three words or something. And, and I did that in this little notebook here that I had put together. I made the little notebook. And uh, it was just fun. It was a lot of fun. And it gave me, you know, I was using inks I was using stickers I was you know it wasn't super super creative um, well sometimes it got there you know it, it got there and I really enjoyed it I used washi tape <clears throat> I used some of my favorite markers and it was super simple I had to keep it that way because I wasn't you know I didn't have a whole lot of time that month but that's that's one that I did and I've done other challenges too but this time I decided to do the Create December because that's being sponsored by Brie at Documented Journey. And she's put out this list of uh, prompts and they're just one word. And there's one for each day until the 25th of December. It's just one word. And it, at first I wasn't going to do it. I thought, well, maybe I better just do my own thing and just just uh, do, you know, challenge myself to because I have several ideas of how to use up a lot of my little ink samples that are down to almost nothing um i can get by with just a couple of drops for some of the ink splatters and the nick stewart technique that you've seen on this channel but then i thought you know i like this because it's got one word and several of these words make me want to go look for a certain color of ink and i think that's going to happen a lot like the first one where it said berry right away i was thinking about uh, a deep maroon or you know a, a certain color ink and uh, even when it said sweater because it, it made me think of the norwegian sweaters that my grandmother used to make and things like that so i'm going to link you to um her all of her stuff she has a youtube channel and uh is on instagram and all of that but i'll i'll link you where you can find this prompt list in case you want to do this but really the fun with with a challenge like this you can dig into your stuff you can see you know notebooks you haven't used you can get creative and that time that i did this one i really didn't think i had a notebook so i cut up i cut up a claire fontaine notebook that had that uh, french rule in it and I didn't really like the paper, but I thought, well, it's just going to be a challenge with stickers and all that. And what I found was some days I wanted to use Tamoy River paper, so I just glued it in. I mean, I just used it and then I just glue sticked it or I, you know, I put it in there, glue stick. <laughs> I used a glue stick to glue it in. And it was, it was a lot of fun, but this was back when I... I just didn't have a whole bunch of little notebooks laying around, but then it didn't take long subscribing to the ink, uh, ink flights and things like that before I ended up with quite a few notebooks. And this is the one I've chosen to use. And I actually used one of Bree's stickers from her Etsy shop. Well, it's not Etsy anymore. She's got her own website now. But at the time, I think I ordered this. I'm not sure. It was either still Etsy or... But uh, I will link her... Uh, website for you in case you're interested but this notebook i got um let's see i gotta show you because you probably never believe me i had been eyeballing these at hobby lobby and they were like 15.99 but it was marked down to 4.24 but 
it's not a good sale if you're not going to use it. So I had I had two of these and I decided this is going to be my sketchbook. And this morning I opened it up and I glued in a smaller version of the um, of the prompt. So that it'll be right there. I don't have to go look in if I lose this bigger one, which I'll probably put up there with my calendar or something. Um, I like this. It's like a five by five, but I like when you open it you can use all the way across so that makes it like five by ten and it's it's really nice so i went to the back and i thought oh but what if i can't write in it with a fountain pen but it's really nice paper it's toothy but it's somewhere between a watercolor and a just plain sketch paper and i even did a, a splatter i hope you can see this of course with my ridiculous setup here i don't know what you're seeing until i view myself later but <laughs> Anyway, that's how it is, but it really showed up good. I mean, it splattered and it didn't bleed through. So I'm excited about that because it's good enough paper. And I would have made it good enough anyway, because I could always do what I did before. And if I didn't have any good luck, I could just um, do my art on another piece and glue it in. And this would become like a scrapbook. And that's still better than having it sit in my Tupperware tub full of unused notebooks. And that's the kind of thing that I'm, uh, that I offend myself by doing. If I have too many things that I'm not using, um, I don't know what it is. It, it's a movement inside me that says, I don't want to have all this stuff just collected because, you know, I really want to use it or pass it on, you know, to someone else or donate it or whatever if I'm not going to. But um, this is one of the ways by participating in a challenge that I know I'll use this notebook and they usually really mean a lot to me. Because that little one, you know, I mean, and it, all it has is a sticker and a little washi on the front. But I look at this quite a bit and I laugh at some of those sentences I wrote. I mean, it was just crazy. And I actually put them on Facebook. Like I was seeing one. It was a, it was a really weird one. Let me see if I can find it. I have, of course, it's not marked or anything. I probably can't find it. Oh, here it is. Um, I can't remember exactly which the words were. <clears throat> excuse me that were that we had to use but here's the page right here and, and I use that that rickshaw sticker and I put I'd rather drink a vial of ink than swallow the vial Jägermeister shot to v, v for a spot on the yacht oh my goodness but it makes me laugh and it's just kind of funny and I think, you know, the first time I'd heard the word Jägermeister, which is some kind of liquor, was when I was in a book club and we, uh, <laughs> we, everybody else except for me did live Jäger shots. Well, I don't drink. I never have. So I, I didn't do it, but I watched them. It was called a scope train, <clears throat> excuse me, where they did a live stream train and, and I enjoyed just being, you know, watching them. It was silly. So I always remember some of these things that I had written in this little uh, challenge thing that I did. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh, it's a lot different when you can't just press the pause button because I'm over here on this side. But I wanted to make sure. Um, so yeah, I think I already kind of covered that it's that doing a challenge like this really encourages me to use what I have. And I think it'll do that for you too if you find a challenge you like or if you create one for yourself because that's that's what I was almost going to do but then I thought oh you know I like community I like to get on Instagram and see what others are doing I absolutely love Bree's art and all of her friends that post their artwork so um and she's made it so open she says right here <clears throat> these prompts are for anyone if you like to write sketch take photos collage you name it these can be for you so one day I might just take a photo but I really do like to do all kinds of uh, mixed media I just don't make time for it that much and in December I want to do that I'm going to do that because I'm telling you and I, I tend to do things when I tell other people I'm gonna do it so it's like I said I was gonna and I'm gonna do it so so it'll give me daily creative time because that was gonna be my number three tip I had it written down to do kind of like an artist date but as I started to study that um, you know I realized well things were kind of shifting and at the time I was actually needing more time away from my desk away from my pens um, being in the unique situation I am where I'm testing inks all the time so doing this challenge for me is it's away from what I normally do um, what I normally do is you know I'm 
focused on a vial of ink with three pens and all kinds of different papers. And, you know, I'm pretty intense into that. I haven't been this month. This um, In November of 2019, I uh, have made fewer videos than really I usually make because I was feeling that imbalance. It was I was really out of balance after September and October. I went through a flurry of activity making uh, videos and content, and I love it. But I didn't want to completely burn out, and I realized I was just sort of off the rails, you know, basically. So when I get, came time to do this particular video, which was going to be last week, I kept thinking, I can't really, it just didn't fit right, you know. And then I remembered how good I feel when I, I do a challenge and I stick with it, you know, for, this will be 25 days. It's from the 1st through the 25th. And it's totally open. I, I, it's not about pressure in myself or, or yourself or anything else. It's about having fun. But, and she puts that, remember to have fun. <laughs> so that's what we need to do. And, but I think it, it really helps when we dive right into what we already have. It's certainly not going to make me want to spend when I have all of these materials and many things that have been uh, gifted to me. I've got stickers that, I mean, almost all of my stickers, except the few that I did order um, that I have left, because I tend to use them, and my mom really loves stickers too, so I send them to her, or I, I use them usually on her letters. But I have stickers, washi, ephemera, things that people have sent me too, and it'll be good to be able to use them, and, and it's totally open-ended. I don't know yet what, what it's going to look like, because I went from uh, thinking that I was just going to do ink splatters to realizing I'd like to do a little bit of mix this and that and I'm not I'm happy to not know how it's going to turn out that's you know that's the way that it should be uh oh there goes my telephone and I'm trapped on this side <laughs> oh dear oh it looks like Mando got it um so the next point okay there's no right or wrong way there really isn't even even when you're participating like this with um with uh, something that has prompts. Oh my goodness, <laughs> technology, you gotta love it. You either gotta love it or hate it, I guess. I actually hate it, but we still have a home phone. So it ends up being this booby trap every time I try to do a video. And that's my fault. I never even thought about taking it to him or silencing it, so. <laughs> oh, I think I already covered like the idea that uh, you don't have to go along with, with someone else's prompt list and there are many, many good prompt lists, including this one from Brie at Documented Journey, but um, you can make your own. You can just make up your own thing and decide to spend 10 or 15 minutes a day. And that's my goal. I think 10, 15, but more, no more than 30 minutes just to really treat myself in, in, during the day to sit down with my materials and let it go however it's going to go. Because I know I know for sure that as soon as I get an ink syringe in my hand, which is, you know, and, and do stuff like this, I could even do a little writing because every prompt makes me think of something that I want to write about. And then I could decorate my page with the ink uh, splatters. I, I would expect that that's what you'll see. Hi, Coco. Coco's walking by. <laughs> he was fast asleep, so I thought I better do my video. So, okay. I think I'm running out of steam here, actually. But, um... I showed you, yeah, I showed you my, uh, what I'm going to use for my book and, and I'll link you real good shape to all of Bree's stuff so you'll know. And I, I've showed you guys over the months all, all of the stuff I have. You know, I have all kinds of stickers and things to use, stencils and all of that. So I'm excited because it, it really doesn't matter to me if it looks like the cat did it because it's just the color that I love and the fun, you know, of it. And everybody's quote unquote art is going to look different you know when I used to when I started doing this back in uh, 2015 I really got back into working with art and I took some lessons locally and I kind of you know was trying to break through that barrier of thinking that I wasn't creative anymore I just uh, I just hadn't broken through it yet and I think I still kind of hold myself back thinking that what I'm doing is just not the same as what I'm seeing on Instagram. Well, of course it isn't because each one of us is different and we don't we don't want to put pressure where we're not going to even do it if it's not what we call perfect because those are the two things, uh, perfectionism and uh, procrastination that, that are likely to get me if anything does. Because if I sit down and I start working with the fun materials, it goes well, I have a good time, and, and really, 
I get past that thing of worrying about what it looks like. It's the process. It's having a good time. And anybody will tell you that. It's not about the final outcome. And, you know, and I'm not Picasso and I'm never going to be. But so um, you can follow me on Instagram at Snowball7470. But I'll go ahead and put that down in the description box too. And I hope to see some of the people who uh, watch me here participate in this, even if it's just, you know, a couple times or uh, here and there, smattering of um, art, any amount you can make time for. Hey, Coco, you want to help me end the video? Come here, baby. Did you have a nap? Oh, you did. Mm. This little baby is just pretty much reviving my spirit, I'll tell you. We had all those losses last year, and then to have this little bundle come right to the, right to our door last Saturday. Say hello. Say hello to the people. Poor thing, still sleepy. I think he went out to eat a little, but yeah, you're sleepy. Last night I got so worried because you, you know, he goes hyper and jumps all over everything and plays with everything. And he goes through those spells and then he'll take a nap. But he was just so like, yeah, like he is right now, like real laid back. Oh, you're a baby. Yeah, you're just a baby. And I, I went and told Manuel, I said, I don't know, Manuel, he might be sick. He, I, I was really worried. And he said, no, he's not sick. He's been active all day long. So I put on uh, this Christmas movie and I kind of sacked out on the couch and next thing I knew he was leaping on the curtains and jumping from the couch to the cat climber and it was like, no, no, he's not sick. <laughs> I'm just a worry wart, that's all. Okay, we got to end this video, Coco, because before something else ends it, okay? So say goodbye. Yeah, I got you. Oh, no, you don't, you don't really want to be turned around. That's all right. It's all right. Okay. We got to go end the video. I'll see you guys on the next video. Um, we'll do the best we can to do content. And we'll probably have uh, Coco running past quite often. But that's how it is. <laughs> and it's good. It's all good. He's just such a sweet little kitty. Okay. I got to pick you up in order to press the button. Bye for now, guys. <laughs>